Here's a reference photo that we'll be using, which I downloaded from pixabay.com. We're going to do this painting in water mixable oils. Here's my palette and the colors I've selected. I have a mixture of different brands of water mixable oils. The colors on the bottom row from left to right are Payne's Gray, Cadmium Red Dark, Van Dyke Brown, Dioxazine Purple, Primary Magenta, French Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Yellow Light, and of course Titanium White. I lay out my colors on freezer paper on the plastic side and lay that in a Stay Wet palette because of the size of it and I can put a lid on it which helps to reduce the oxidation and keeps my paints fresh a little bit longer. I'm also using fast drying medium and it is water mixable oil medium from Artisan. This is a 16 by 20 stretched canvas and my drawing is done in just regular pencil. I'm using a dry bristle brush. I will dip my brush into this fast dry medium that I just put a little puddle of it on my palette very sparingly. I find that these paints are um, stiff and kind of dry, so I have to use a little bit of medium. I want to keep these first layers very thin. And speaking of using mediums, some people may ask, well, on this water mixable oils, can't you just use water as a medium? I don't have a great deal of experience with these. I've only been using them for a couple of years. And when I first started using them, I did use water. Now, I have not noticed any degradation or problems with the pieces that I have done. But I have heard and read since then that you may have problems with flaking or yellowing or mm, some sort of degradation of it. I haven't experienced it, but it's only been a couple years. That may be for purists, I don't know. But just to be on the safe side, to make sure that my paintings will last a long time, I do just stick with the mediums that are suitable for water mixable oils that are labeled for them. So we're starting off with the fast dry medium for these first layers. Number one, it'll help to speed up the drying. And then later on, I'll use the water mixable linseed oil because it is a fatter recipe. And that way we adhere to the principles of fat over lean. Now looking closely at my reference photo, I'm just trying to pick out the darkest colors or the darkest areas and I'm using a mixture of the brown and ultramarine blue to make this dark color, which is a very classic recipe. Now even though this paint is stiff and, and kind of dry, if I do press harder with my brush, it will thin out the paint some on, you know, onto the canvas so it will appear a little bit lighter because it's, it's a thinner layer of paint. We will have to do multiple layers of paint on the elephant. So, you know, to get all the shading and the, and the variety of skin tones. So I definitely want to keep this first layer as, as thin as possible so that I don't have too much of a buildup of paint on the canvas, number one, because it'll take longer to dry if it's too thick. And number two, I'm not really doing this as an impasto type of um, style. I, I don't do that very often. I'm not as comfortable with it. I, I tend to have my canvases very smooth. That's just the way I work. So anyway, yes, keep your first layers of paint as thin as you can. You don't want any big thick globs or anything like that yet.
I want to vary up my grays just a little. I don't want to completely rely on the combination of Payne's gray and the brown and the blues because there's a cool. So I'm mixing a warmer gray by the red and green. Red and green are opposite on the color wheel so they neutralize each other. But if I make it a little bit heavier on the red side, it's a, it's a warmer gray. And I'm going to start to look for some of these areas that the value is not that different from the blue and the brown mixes in terms of, you know, how dark or light that, that those values are, are the same. But I'm paying attention just a little bit to the temperature of the color, meaning a little bit warmer to indicate where the sunlight is on his body. I know this looks really dark right now because we've got just the white background. I didn't tone the canvas and, and none of the background is completed yet. Um, so it looks really dark. We can adjust that as, as time goes on and we see how it looks when it's uh, against the colors in the background. I want to start indicating some of the sunlight on the top of the elephant's back. So I'm going to vary my colors now. <laughs> Again, I'm using yellow ochre and white and the little bit of mud that was left on my brush. And again, just a tiny bit of the medium. I will say I do love how these oils blend. It's, it is nice. I want to bring this color down into here. It's, I guess, to show the separation from the crease of his groin area, from differentiating his leg from his belly. I'd like it to be a little brighter, so I did rinse out um, my brush. So I don't have quite as much contamination of that gray color on there. Because this is kind of a fine line. And I'm adding um, a little bit of that cadmium yellow.
to remove some of this paint right here, I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush covered up by the paper towel to um, lift that off. You can also use a Q-tip or just a corner of a paper towel. It'll do the same thing. Our light source is coming from above and to the right at the top of the painting, so I want to make sure I darken the left side of his trunk. I just use my paintbrush to smooth out that area of paint that I just applied, and um, it helps for the blending. And it's a softer edge. I didn't want just a dark line down the left side of his trunk. Working in these thin layers of paint like this, it doesn't take very much to go very far, which is a nice benefit. I'm using this warmer gray that we'd mixed up earlier with the uh, red and green combination just to warm up the gray on this side of his face. This is fairly repetitive, so I sped up the video in double time. Leave me a comment. Let me know if that works for you. I'm uh, always taking suggestions for my future videos.
This is his front right leg, which is behind his trunk, and you just see a little tiny piece of it. But I do want to make the color a little different from the trunk so that you can tell what that is. I'm using um, light gray on the left side, the cool gray as a background for the tusk. And on the right side, I want the colors to be warmer because they're more in the sun. And I don't want to use just plain white yet. We'll layer that on at the end. So it's important at this stage to put our background in. It will help us to gauge the colors that we'll need to use to add highlights and um, make the elephant feel like it's part of the background. So I'm primarily using sap green, which I've desaturated with a tiny bit of our cadmium red. And then I throw in a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow here and there where I think the light should be just a little bit different. And then once you lay those colors in, you can use a palette knife or a brush. It doesn't matter. Then um, in this exercise, because I want to make sure I keep the paint thin on the canvas because we'll be adding foliage and those light rays and so forth. So I'm smoothing it out with a... Um, soft makeup brush which I also can use as a uh, blender brush without shedding hairs.
I'm using the corner of this flat brush to start to indicate some foliage. And the focus of this video is on the elephant itself, but here's a little lanyap yap so you can see how I do the background. It's just lots and lots of little dabs of paint um, from the corner of the paintbrush and I do vary the colors and I'm also adding a few little uh, areas of warm colors to counteract all the greens and the blues and, and uh, those dark earthy colors just to give a little bit of pop and variety. I did use the same technique for the debris that's on the ground in the foreground, but I made the marks a little bit larger. It would make sense that it's closer to you and so you would so they would look larger. Now back to the elephant because the in my opinion the background is is pretty well established. We'll need to add some lights and some more contrast on the uh, foreground but uh, I think we've got our background established enough now that we can make some adjustments to the color and the um, highlights on the elephant. I have switched now to using linseed oil, or rather the water mixable linseed oil as my medium now. It's a fatter recipe than that uh, fast drying medium we were using to start on our first layers. And that way we comply with the principles of fat over lean. Another advantage is that um, it's not as likely to yellow your colors. When I worked on the background, some of those colors, the greens, bled over into the elephant. So reestablishing the line of his back. And I'm using burnt sienna to do this in with my white to counteract the green. And then we can come back in a little bit and use our brightest highlights.
I'm using a very small, very soft filbert brush. It helps because it's so soft, it, it layers the paint on the under layers very or more easily than if you were to use a stiff brush. When I started indicating the uh, light rays in the background on the diagonal and I want to strengthen those now so that it's more the finalized product so I know um, exactly how and what we need to do to finish off the elephant reference the light rays. I'm using a dry stiff bristle brush. It's around I think it's a number six and I'm using uh, the Payne's Gray because it has a bluish undertone to it with the white and i using this brush because I want it to be a little bit streaky. The nice thing about oils is the more you stroke the paint using that brush, it'll soften and it won't look so stark as when you first apply it. So I'm using a little bit more linseed oil in my mix on my brush than in previous layers. So this almost has the effect of a glaze. And this is a uh, soft filbert that I'm using as well. Just looking for the areas to increase the contrast and redefine edges. We're nearly done. Because of the direction of our light coming from the upper right overhead and also behind the elephant, I'm darkening on the left side of his trunk, on the left side of his head where his ear is kind of behind his head.
to indicate the recess here in this part of the elephant skull, I'm using the darker color to show that it's indented. These elephants have very interesting skulls. If you look closely, you can see that some of this highlight color I'm using is definitely leaning more to the bluish side. Just add a little variety. So here he is all done, made just a couple of marks, just a couple of swipes of paint that I think brought him all together. I added reflected light with the blue in the dome of his forehead and the top of his head, that's the reflected light, and also on the side of his trunk that's away from the, our light source. I added uh, flesh colored tones to the bottom of his ears to indicate that they were forward from his body and that the sun was shining through them so they were lit down in those thinner parts at the bottom of his ears. 
I also softened and use that sunshine highlight color on the socket of his left eyeball. Used titanium white straight out of the tube to highlight his tusks. That's the only place in the entire painting that has straight white. Used horizontal strokes to indicate those lighted patches on the pathway that he hasn't um, gotten to yet. And use those larger brush strokes to indicate the vegetation and the fallen leaves in the foreground. I really, really enjoyed working on this one and I hope you enjoyed the video. So please give me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I will be putting out more videos very soon. Thanks for watching.